So you're an Amazon affiliate with a Pinterest following, wondering how to combine the two to generate affiliate income passively. In this video, I'll go over how you can share Amazon affiliate links on Pinterest without getting in trouble with either Amazon or Pinterest, as both Amazon and Pinterest have quite strict rules when it comes to one another. But first, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Anna and I'm a blogging coach strategist with a passion for Pinterest. And besides sharing Amazon affiliate tips on here, I'm also the author of a Pinterest ebook. So I know a little bit about what makes Pinterest tick as well. If you're watching this and you are brand new to Pinterest and your account is quite new, I do have a separate on how to start and build a Pinterest account and following. So make sure to watch that if you're looking for the basics. But something that you might not know about Pinterest is that Pinterest is one of the platforms that converts the best when it comes to online purchases. They have a higher purchase through rate than some of the other referrers like Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. That means that more people that browse on Pinterest end up buying something they found on Pinterest than Instagram users or Facebook users, for example. And they also have a really long lifespan for their pins. So unlike Instagram or Twitter, where the lifespan of post is only a couple of days or hours at most, pins continue to be shown months and years after they've been posted. Images that I've created and added to Pinterest from years ago still get views and still get clicks. That combines makes it a really really good platform to share affiliate links. But there are some rules. Some affiliate programs do not allow you to share their affiliate links directly on Pinterest. Etsy, for example, forbids it. Also, Pinterest is known to ban or shadow ban users that continue to pin spammy links to various e-commerce platforms. This also sadly seems to be the case for Amazon affiliate pins. So while there are a couple of tutorials out there on how to share Amazon affiliate links on Pinterest, I'm afraid that they're not very effective. It could get you in a lot of trouble with the Amazon affiliate program, or it could get your account suspended on Pinterest. So here's what you want to do instead. If you really want to harness the power that Pinterest has for both conversions when it comes to sales and traffic, but you want to do it without getting in trouble with any other platforms. There is a work around this and a smart solution that can serve you long term. It does involve having a website or domain, so be sure to check out my tutorial on how to create a website and start a blog. But even if you don't plan to have a blogging section to your website, you still need a website. And the benefit of having a website in this case is having a self-hosted domain and domain name where you can build direct landing pages. These landing pages can be designed specifically for the different products and affiliate links that you have in mind, and then promote it onto Pinterest to gain traction and to comply with both the Amazon Associates program rules and the Pinterest overall platform rules. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. To build custom landing pages for your affiliate links and beyond, the first thing that you need to do is go into your WordPress dashboard. And the benefit of WordPress is that they come with a bunch of additional plugins to help you create the pages, the designs, and the templates that you need. For now, you'll only need one plugin and it's totally free. Go to plugins and add new plugin, search for Elementor, and click the install now button that you'll see here and then activate. You can also go to the sheapproach.com slash Elementor to get the plugin file and get started. Once you have that installed and activated, go to new and click page. If you don't see that at the top, it will be under pages and add new page. Give this page a title, something that's relevant to the product that you know you're going to embed, but keep anything that has to do with the Amazon trademark or name out of it. Once you've set a title, you can save the draft and then simply go to edit with Elementor to build the page. I usually build my landing pages with Elementor because it allows me to get rid of distractions. So for example, on my usual blog pages and posts, I have my sidebar in there, which I usually wanted there for when people read my blog. I want them to go follow me on social media. I want them to go check out my blog categories. I want them to sign up to my newsletter. But the purpose of this specific landing page is to drive people to the book that I'm going to include and have them make a sale. So I would rather not have all these additional distractions and choices. You want them to be able to have only one action that they can potentially take. And Elementor allows you to do that in a really simple way. Just go to the settings icon and where you see page layout, you can select your desired page layout. Elementor full width usually gets rid of your sidebar. So you see there was a sidebar here before. Now it's only my header, my footer that's included on all pages. If not, 
account, just go to settings again and choose Elementor Canvas. You can switch back and forth between the two without losing what you actually built on the custom page, but the Elementor Canvas literally gives you a blank page to work with. So it's a great option if you want a simplistic version of this. Let's say I want to build a super simplistic page to send people to a book or a product of my choice, but I want them to know who sent them there. Elementor allows you to basically drag and drop anything that you want to create. So if you go into sidebar here, you'll see you can have sections, images, text, dividers, maps, you can have additional plugins, which we'll go over in a little bit, a bunch, a bunch of choices. You can get lost in that and you can play around with it depending on what you want to build. You can also go to the folder right here to access a couple of blocks and pages that they have. A couple of these are free and a couple of them are only available to those who have the premium version of Elementor. Can help if you're starting from scratch and you don't want to build all this, but I'm going to show you how to build it from absolute scratch. So in case you just want to use the free version, you can go ahead and use that. So for that, I'm just going to drag this here and you can select the structure of each section. So for the main section, I only have one thing that I want displayed horizontally. I'm going to choose the content width to be full width because I don't want it boxed in, I want it to go all the way to the sides. I'm going to go back to the elements here and add an image. Don't worry about what the image looks like here. Click on it and upload one from your media library. Once you have your logo set up there, you can customize it. So obviously if people land on this page, I don't want them to see this for the whole page. So what I'm going to go and do instead is go to style and just tweak with the size of that until I like the look of it. And don't forget to go back and forth via this to preview what the page actually looks like and then go back and make your edits. And very important is add spacing when you need it. I don't want this stuck to the very top necessarily. So I'm going to go ahead to margin. I'm going to delink these values and at the top, I'm just going to add maybe 30 pixels or so. That looks a lot better already go back and forth between it. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to choose a divider and I'm going to put it right under. Go to style color. Something like that. Choose the width so you'll see it and then align it to the center. Yeah, that probably looks a lot better. Something else that I'm going to do and you can do this or you can choose not to do it is you can go back to your photo element right here and where it says link, you can link to your homepage. So what that does is if people land on this page, I can click on that and it's going to take them to the home page. Again, if you want to keep distractions free, you can keep that link out of there, but that's just a personal choice. If somebody does land on it, they don't buy the product that I'm going to include on here. I still want them to go to my blog and check it out. Right. So now for the product that you have in mind, I'm going to go back add another section and add a 50 50 column instead. If I go over to my actual product, so this is my Amazon book, but you can choose obviously any product product on Amazon that's available there or on the affiliate program that you have in mind. The only problem with Amazon is that you can't just copy paste the photo and they have taken away the site stripe link code that you can embed. So you have to go through the whole process of using the Amazon scratch pad. If what I'm saying makes absolutely no sense, go watch the how to fix the Amazon site stripe update and replace old photos video because I show you exactly how to still grab Amazon images for products It's a longer process and I I do recommend a quicker solution for that. It's all explained in the video, but I personally use the lasso plugin. If you want to try lasso, go ahead and check it out at the slash lasso, and you'll be able to download the plugin just like you've done for the Elementor plugin. And then you'll be able to add multiple displays and photos with Amazon that you're not able to add without this plugin. So I'm going to add a lasso display in there. Lasso allows you to build these like stunning displays, or if you only need the image, you can go ahead and do that. They also do tables, lists, galleries, buttons, all the sort of stuff that will work super, super well on a landing page. But for the point of keeping it simple, I'm just going to go ahead with image. And then I'm going to create a new link. I'm going to hop back over to Amazon, grab the link paste it in here, add the link and add the image. So what they've done is that they've copied that image for me. Then on this box, I'm going to go ahead and add a little head in, and then I'm going to add a text editor and a button. So again, I can do use one of the Elementor buttons or I can go back to lasso. As you can see, it's all drag and drop, add a display, add a button and it will let me add a button for that. For everything else, obviously you want to customize this. 
And here's where you can share a little information about the product that you picked. I'm gonna go ahead and for this, I'm just gonna copy that. I usually recommend changing it up instead of copying and pasting directly from Amazon. And you can obviously change this. You center it, you can make the actual button a little larger and you can go to style and change anything from the font to the text shadow. Something that you can do in Elementor that works quite well is you can add a hover color. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say the main color I want is again matching my branding and then on hover I want the text color to go black and I want the background color to be red or something. Go back and you'll see what I mean. So it just changes that on view. And then my favorite is the icon list. So you can go in here, you can actually change these icons and then duplicate them and list a couple of things that are included in the book. I think this looks quite good. Something else you could do is just du duplicate that, add a new section here at the bottom and just drag and drop it to move it in there. And then there you have it, a landing page ready to work. You can continue building on this page and making updates as you go. But I personally think that for the purpose of this, you don't really need to go into all the features, all the information about a product. You want to give people a little snippet of it. But the main point is to get people from here to the actual shopping website or page where even if the people go to Amazon, they say this product is not for them, they might go scroll and buy something else. Let's say somebody actually wants to start a YouTube channel instead, they can add that, they can add all of this to cart and then you get commission on all of that. Once your page is all done, don't forget to publish and update it and then you will find it in your pages and you can just click view. You'll see a live version of it right here and then obviously when people click on it, they will be taken to Amazon. Now that you have the landing page, all you need to do is build a Pinterest pin for it. So you cannot, contrary to popular belief, just pin this image. Amazon does not allow you to use their image so you have to build a pin with your own images or free stock photos. If you go on Pinterest, you'll see a couple of the graphics that I've created for my different blog posts. These are to take people to the blog posts and questions, and you can do the same for products. So for example, in this case, you can have an image of yourself that leads people to that landing page. You'll see all of these images are linked to a page. In this case, it's an Etsy image, but it's not an affiliate link because Etsy would disallow it. So somebody's losing money on this and they could potentially have an Etsy link if they just build that page as a landing page first that takes them to Etsy. And then the graphics that I have in mind are something like this. You can find any sort of product that is similar to it. You can take your own product photos of the item that you want to promote and then just add a little bit of information on there to take people to that landing page. You can create a simple graphic that shows both the lifestyle and the product that looks really nice there. You can easily create that in Canva or you can use a stock photo with a little information about the product that you want to promote. Again, you can do this all in Canva, play around with the designs. I do have a separate video on creating Pinterest graphics that might help with this step. And if you do grab my Pinterest ebook, it comes with 15 free templates that you can use and edit right away. So for example, if I use one of my templates, I'll just copy this page. Let's say I'm promoting my blogging ebook. So I'll go to elements and search for something like blogging or laptop or whatever it is. You can drag the photo there. And then let's say I like that image, but I want the rest of this to just move down a little bit. And then all you have to do is download that graphic, go to download, download, and that is downloaded. Go back to Pinterest, go to the home feed or the business feed, it doesn't really matter, and just click create pin. You'll have to upload the photo find it and I usually rename it something that has to do with the topic or the product. Again, SEO is super important. So don't just leave your images and pins or pages just named Amazon product or anything similar. Name them what the actual product is, add a title, 
add a description or the pin for this. If I've already wrote something on the page, I'll have something similar wrote in there. And because this is not a direct affiliate link, you don't have to include an affiliate disclosure in there. And that just reminded me that I totally forgot to include an affiliate disclosure on this page. So I'm going to go back, edit it with Elementor. I'm going to choose a little text editor. Disclosure is just this. It needs to be visible, not hidden and close to the actual buttons. So that is a perfect example of that. You have the disclosure, you're doing right by Amazon. You can send all the traffic that you want to this page. And then all you have to do to send traffic to this page via Pinterest is pin that page. Then go back to your page and copy the link, choose a board where to pin it to. For example, my how to start a blog, go back to your Pinterest pin and you can create as many pins as you want in different versions that lead back to that same page for more chances. And I usually change the background image, change the product image, even change the text on it. And obviously the title in the description. And when you're ready, just hit publish. This workaround works for more than just the Amazon affiliate program. I use this trick for sharing Amazon affiliate links where it's not allowed, especially since my books are on Amazon and sometimes I want to promote them to my email list. But obviously Amazon doesn't allow you to share your direct affiliate links in your email list or anywhere offline like your other books. So you can just send people to a landing page that you designed where your links are embedded there. That is allowed because the links reside on a page that's public. This also will work really, really well for you if you have any sort of online courses, freebies, communities, like private Facebook groups. Well, now you know exactly how to do that. And it just involves duplicating the page that you've created previously, because yes, you can duplicate these pages. You don't have to create it from scratch every single time. And I'm going to show you how exactly to save a template and re-embed a template that you have for a page. If you're happy with the layout of this page, this is what you have to do to create a template for it. Go to the save options right here and save as template. Give it a name that you'll remember, save it, and then go back to pages, new page, give it the name of a follow-up product and click edit with Elementor. Jump to find the product that you want on Amazon. Go back to settings and click Elementor Canvas. And then instead of building everything one element at a time, just go into the folder right here, go to my template, and then you can preview your templates if you have multiple and you don't remember which one is which. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and insert apply. And then it's gonna look just like the last page. Obviously, you just need to change the main details. So in this case, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna select a new display. I'm gonna go to image again, and let's say I'm gonna add this chair or something similar. Give it a title that resonates with the audience. And then go back and change the link here with the Amazon link. If the image is too big, again, you can go back and change that. Or sometimes what I do is I go to the columns and I give it a smaller column width than the other block. So this is 40, 60 instead. And this is a brand new landing page that you can send people on to buy this on Amazon. So yes, this method might take a couple of extra steps in comparison to sharing direct affiliate links, but it works. And one of the reasons why it works so well is because the referring domain that's attached to your pin is your own domain. If you remember to also claim your website on Pinterest, Pinterest then gives you a lot of trust and authority when it comes to pinning your own links. They want more content. They want new referring domains and pins that lead to them on the Pinterest platform. So they will push out these pins a lot further than any other pins out there. It goes from being a spammy domain to a unique piece of content to them. And it also helps your audience bridge the gap between random Pinterest followers and your own website to then make an educated purchase. And if you're looking for more places to promote your Amazon affiliate links outside of Pinterest, check out my video that I did on this exact topic with 10 plus places that you are allowed to embed Amazon affiliate links. And wait up, before you head out, make sure you sign up for the wait list of my new ebook coming soon, The Sheer Approach to Making Your First Three Amazon Affiliate Sales. If you are brand new to Amazon and you have not made your first three affiliate sales yet, you need to do that now because that is the only way to get your account approved and to be able to start earning commission and get paid for it. Head over to the Sheer Approach slash three sales to sign up and be notified when the ebook goes live and also get the first chapter for free.
And if you want to learn more about perfecting your pinning technique, getting more Pinterest followers or more clicks on your Pinterest pins, be sure to check out my Pinterest marketing section on my blog or check out my full guide to creating and growing a Pinterest account in the form of my Pinterest ebook. Like always, thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me today. If you found this video useful and learned something new, do not forget to subscribe for more videos just like this or request your next video tutorial in the comments below. <laughs>